Thank you very much for introducing me. In my presentation, I will show some of our results in the field of oral delivery systems for time control release. Oral dosing still represents the preferred uh, administration mode for drugs, uh, but the current needs related to novel drugs having mostly serious bioavailability constraints and uh, advanced therapeutic needs require that drug delivery systems are specially devised and used. In the field of oral delivery, a uh, time control release encompassing a lag phase of a program duration that starts upon administration may be of interest in a number of instances, primarily for the chronopharmaceutical treatment of uh, high morbidity chronic pathologies that show typical circadian rhythms with night or early morning peaks, such as uh, cardiovascular disease and asthma, for example, uh, in this case, the dosage form taken at bedtime would provide pharmacological protection when, uh, when mostly needed, thus increasing, improving the <coughs> efficacy and also the, the compliance of the, of the treatment. Uh, moreover, a lag phase of proper duration starting upon gastric emptying would allow colon delivery to be, obta to be obtained uh, according, uh, uh, exploiting the relatively uh, consistent in trans small intestinal transit time of dosage form, which has been described to last three to five hours and be mm. poorly affected uh, by the characteristics of the dosage forms and by the fed or fasted state of the subjects. Uh, colon delivery would improve the treatment of intestinal pathologies, including IBD, and also, hopefully, the oral bioavailability of peptide drugs. This would be because of the reduced presence of digestive peptidases in the large bowel and in the small intestine, and of, the, of a greater responsiveness to permeation enhancement. Oral delivery systems for time control release are often in the form of coated dosage forms, wherein a polymeric coating is intended to delay the onset of release from a drug-containing core. Based on the physico-chemical nature of the film-forming polymer and on the composition of the film, the latter may work as a rupturable barrier or as a permeable, so diffusive, or semi-permeable, or else as an erodible barrier. Erodible coatings are generally composed of swellable hydrophilic polymers that, when exposed to aqueous medium, go through a glassy rubbery transition. And uh, as a result of transition, a gel layer is formed and the, and the rubbery polymer undergoes progressive dissolution and erosion until the core, the drug-containing core, is no longer shielded from the outer medium and drug release can take place, finally. Uh, the duration of the lag phase imparted depends on the physical chemical properties of the polymer, primarily its molecular weight and its viscosity so, and on the coating level. The manufacturing technique may also affect the structure of the coating and thus to, to some extent its functionality. Double compression technique was employed in the earlier attempts to produce erodible delivery systems for time controlled release. Uh, in this case, positioning of the core in the, in the die of the tabletting machine was a critical step. Anyway, by correctly centering it within the polymer powder bed, biconvex tablets provided with coatings of homogeneous thickness could be obtained. And in vitro, Drag, drag release, the onset of drug release was delayed for a reproducible period of time. However, some issues related to the performance and uh, especially the quite extended and poorly flexible lag phases due to the relatively thick and porous coatings that could be achieved by this technique and the initial leaching out of a certain amount of the drug uh, had to be addressed. So, film coating 
uh, and its feasibility was explored, um, which would have, of would have offered uh, better scale-up prospects and also broadened the range of viable core formulations. For example, to extend, to include tablets of large size and gelatin capsules on the one hand, and uh, pellets, uh, mini tablets, granules on the other. A limited technical background was available on the use of swellable hydrophilic polymers as film coating agents, and this mainly concerned low viscosity grades applied as thin layers for protective taste masking or cosmetic purposes. Nonetheless, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose of high viscosity grade was uh, appeared potentially suitable for providing delays on the order of hours without binding to excessively thick coat layers. These polymer were suspended in hydroalcoholic vehicles in order to counteract the thickening effect they exert upon hydration, which was indeed expected to hamper the spraying operations. The coatings applied by hydroorganic film coating um, showed a smooth surface, uh, consistent thickness, uh, and a dense structure, low porosity structure. And in vitro, um, they provide the desired release pattern with showing greater delaying ability and prompt release after lag phases that depended on the coating level. Indeed, these two parameters, that is lag time, in vitro lag time, and the coating level expressed as amount of polymer applied per, surf, per, per unit of surface were in a, a linear relationship with each other. Considering the regulatory issues involved by organic solvent, aqueous film, co aqueous film coating was attempted with various viscosity grades of hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, uh, namely methosyl E5, uh, methosyl E50, and methosyl K4M, applied up to a weight gain of 20%. The polymer concentration in the coating solutions needed to be kept properly low, and uh, an attentive setup of, the, of all the um, process parameters had to be carried out to avoid major problems of nozzle clogging and lengthy processing. The viscosity grade of the polymer was found to chiefly affect the process time. From all the polymers under investigation, coated units having satisfactory physico-technological properties were obtained. These units were shown to delay the onset of release in vitro as a function of the polymer viscosity. Weight gain was equal or comparable. And particularly using methosyl E50 resulted in an advantageous balance of process feasibility, ability to delay drug release, and fine tuning of the lag phase based on the coating level. Indeed, uh, a linear relationship was found between lag time and weight gain obtained by the application of the polymer. And in vivo studies in healthy volunteers fasted overnight demonstrated that the systems coated with this polymer were able to defer the, the appearance of the model drug in saliva as a function of the coat thickness. Lag time, both in vitro and in vivo, correlated well with the coat thickness. And inter interestingly, the duration of the lag phase in vivo and in vitro was comparable. The fate of these coated units, and particularly of labeled placebo units, on administration was studied by gamma scintigraphy. These systems were enteric coated for colonic release purposes to overcome the variability of gastric emptying. And the study, the imaging study, showed that in all cases, the units break, broke up in the ascending cone, as, as highlighted by the disintegration images of which this one is an example. This aqueous film coating uh, technology 
was also applied to hard and soft gelatin capsules. When, when these capsules were used as cores instead of tablets, there are, it was necessary to adjust carefully the process parameters to avoid major technical problems, especially of sticking and shrinking of the heat and moisture sensitive shells. And particularly, an adequate balance of inlet air temperature and spraying rate needed to be sought, uh, especially in the initial phases of the process, in order to ensure that the solvent could rapidly, could rapidly evaporate without altering the original volume of the capsules. As a result, the manufacturing of coated capsules, soft and hard gelatin ones, was possible with no need for a subcoating, for a protective subcoating or a sealing subcoating. And weight gain uh, in a fairly broad range were obtained. From har coated hard gelatin capsules, a time-controlled release performance was obtained not only in vitro but also in vivo, with lag times increasing as a function of the coat thickness. This film coating technology was also applied to multiple units, and when, when it was transfer, transferred to mini-tablet cores, larger amount of low viscosity HPMC were found necessary in order to obtain lag phases potentially suitable for colon delivery or chronopharmaceutical purposes. Thus, the thickness of the resulting coatings would have ultimately failed to comply with the size requirements of multiple units, and moreover, the rate of initial release would, m would have most likely been reduced because of a matrix effect exerted, exerted by the hydrated polymer and in the thick coating. In order to solve this problem, uh, the outer application of an insoluble, flexible, and increasingly permeable film was proposed. Such a film was aimed to slow down the uptake of water by the underlying HPMC layer without acting as a major mechanical constraint to the relevant swelling. Eudragit NE was selected as the film-forming polymer because of adequate tensile properties <coughs> and Explotab V17, a super disintegrant, was added as a non-conventional pore former. By tuning the composition of the outer film and also the ratio between the two coating levels that relevant to the HPMC coating and that relevant to the acrylic coating, it was actually possible to obtain longer lag phases followed by still prompt release phases. Based on this novel two-layer design, an insulin deli colon delivery system was developed and evaluated. After uh, verifying that the most challenging manufacturing step, that is uh, tableting and uh, above all aqueous of spray coating, would not impair the protein integrity. Uh, sodium glycocholate was incorporated into the core along with the protein for absorption enhancement. And in order to target the colon according to the time-dependent approach, an enteric film was applied as the outermost coating based on hydroxypropyl methylcellulose acetate succinate. While tested in vitro, the three-layer system withstood the acidic stage of testing and released the protein and the absorption enhancer following lag phases of comparable duration approximately three-fold longer than those provided by mini-tablets that were coated with the HPNC and the enteric polymer only, so without the outer film. Administered to rats with pharmacologically induced diabetes, the three-layer system brought about as compared with the uh, relevant mini-tablet core and a solution of the hormone, a steep rise in the insulin plasma level and a sharp decrease in the glucose levels, approximately six hours post-dose. 
the uh, bioavailability from the delivery system was more than doubled as compared with the relevant mini tablet core, so the uncoated mini tablet from which the delivery system was uh, manufactured by coating, and uh, the f and pharmacological availability was tenfold higher. And this result would indicate that the protein would effectively be absorbed after a leg phase that may have allowed distal intestinal release and probably permeation of the protein. More recently, uh, the manufacturing technique was changed. So uh, erodible delivery systems were, for tank control release, were um, devised in the form of functional capsule shells, which would be in principle independent of their core formulation with uh, considerable benefits in terms of product development. These capsules were produced by hot processing techniques, uh, chiefly injection molding, which are raising huge interest in almost every manufacturing area, but are still poorly exploited in our field. Hot processing enables the production of high density objects of whatever shape, starting from softened, melted thermoplastic materials. A, a hydroxypropyl cellulose was chosen as the shell forming agent because of the relevant thermoplasticity and the bench top injection molding press uh, provided with a special mold it was designed on purpose was employed. Caps and, body and bodies of capsule shells having differing nominal thickness values were obtained within automated cycles of few seconds. And in, vit in vitro studies pointed out a rapid release of the model drug containing, contained into the assembled capsule shells after lag, af sorry, after lag phases that depended on the polymer viscosity and on the thickness of the shell. This behavior was well reflected in vivo, um, lag phases increasing in duration were obtained uh, from capsules formed from uh, the more viscous, the higher viscosity grade of the two HPC uh, screened in vitro, which was uh, uh, a, a low viscosity hydroxypropyl cellulose anyway and lag phases increasing in duration uh, as a function of the shell thickness were obtained, followed by a fairly rapid absorption. In vivo lag phases were comparable with in vitro ones. Lately, these functional capsule shells were replicated by fused deposition modeling, which is a three-dimensional printing technique starting from a low viscosity hydroxypropyl, uh, hydroxypropyl cellulose filaments fabricated in-house by hot melt extrusion. The, the caps and bodies of capsule shells were produced following the development of computer-aided design files after verifying the possibility of building hollow objects by the use of fused deposition modeling which had not been attempted before. Finally, caps and bodies of capsule shells having acceptable physical technological properties were manufactured and uh, assembled into a drug containing device. They provided, they provided the typical lag phase followed by a rapid release at the end. The in vitro performance of the printed capsules was fully corresponding or large, largely corresponding to that previously exhibited by molded capsules. And uh, this result, though preliminary, uh, would support at least the real, ti real time prototyping potential of uh, fused deposition modeling versus injection molding in the manufacturing of uh, erodible delivery systems for in, the, in the form of capsules for time-controlled release. Uh, I would like to end 
by highlighting that the oral drug delivery system systems having the desired physico-technological characteristics and ability to delay drug release depending on the barrier thickness and on the, on the polymer viscosity have been prepared by various techniques ranging from double compression to coating and hot processing including fuse deposition modeling and injection molding. Low viscosity grades of hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and uh, hydroxypropyl cellulose have offered the best balance of differing important aspects such as process feasibility, efficiency in delaying drug release and lack of impact uh, on the release rate and also fine tuning of the lag phase. Delivery systems manufactured by aqueous film coating and by injection molding have been demonstrated to yield the pursued release performance in vivo and administered to volunteers delivery systems obtained by aqueous film coating provided with an enteric film for colonic release have been seen to target the colon by an imaging investigation. Administered to diabetic rats, multiple unit insulin delivery systems obtained by aqueous film coating have brought about a clear hypoglycemic response after a lag phase possibly consistent with small intestinal transit time of the animal model. So, a rodible drug delivery system, either in single or multiple unit configuration, either coated or manufactured by hot processing, are an effective tool for retaining chronopharmaceutical and colonic release of orally administered drugs and uh, the future of these delivery systems may be bound to progress in the use of hot processing techniques such as injection molding and fuse deposition modeling. So I would like to thank my uh, colleagues because this is uh, uh, the work, a review of the work of a large group and particularly our head, Professor Andrea Gazzaniga and Professor Maria Edvige Sangalli who has left us too soon and too young. And uh, I would like to thank everybody for attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very clear talk. And we have time for one or two short questions. Uh, just an idea, maybe it's a silly one. Could you use your 3D printing technology to prepare multi-walled capsules and if you have such a multi walled capsule, like an onion, okay. then you could actually produce maybe a pulsatile release. Okay, we have, uh, we, make sense? we have obtained pulsatile release from capsules made up of hydrophilic swellable polymers. And the possibility of, we have also investigated the possibility of coating these delivery systems prepared by hot processing by uh, spray coating. For example, we have applied an enteric coating on HPC capsules. The possibility of preparing, preparing multi-layered capsules only by the use of hot processing techniques is something very complicated from, an in, I think, an engineering point of view because it requires a co-extrusion process or something like that. Probably by three-dimensional printing, it may be easier. We would be very interested, but we have not yet attempted. <laughs> we are in a in a earlier stage of uh, attempts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your nice you. presentation. Mm. Um, I have two questions. Yes. One, one, mm. one is related to the food effect. Uh, do you have any idea about the food mm. effects in volunteers or in rats? Yes, I didn't present. We have some results. Uh, uh, about uh, the pharmacokinetic results uh, have also, not of the capsules, but of the coated tablets, uh, have been performed both uh, in the fasted and in the fed state. Anyway, in, the, feds, in uh, the fed state, there were more variability, but not so higher variability. Anyway, I think it was rather a case because food effect uh, um, has a strong influence on gastric emptying. So. Uh, food effect uh, has uh, a strong influence on the moment of breakup of these units. Mm -hmm. It should not have an influence, and we have some result in this respect, on colon delivery, because in that sense you have 
you, you must use enterocoated units, especially when you deal with single unit dosage forms, because they are much more affected by gastric emptying time. And so um, you, you, mm, fug defect would uh, uh, impact on the moment of breakup, but not really on the site of breakup, because with the enterocoating, you, uh, you could overcome the variability in gastric emptying. So food effect uh, may, affect, may, may, may be stronger um, if, you, if you need a, a, a timed and site control release. If you only need a site controlled in the colon, you can overcome it by an enteric coating. If you only need a chronopharmaceutical effect uh, and not a site controlled uh, release, you you don't need a site, uh, you you don't need, need an enteric coating, and if the drug have no absorption windows, uh, and it can be absorbed throughout the intestine and especially from the distal intestine, you you may have your chronopharmaceutical effect independent of the site of release. So mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> can I have the mm -hmm. answer? Thank you very much. I think this is okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you thank very you. much again. Let's thank, thank our speaker again. I'll give you a Thank you very much.